Cool, cool, cool. Yep. All right. Well, um, my name is Andrew Young. <laughs> We're doing like a little uh, podcast slash interview type of video. Um, we have Lorenzo here today at the YDS. <laughs> That's right. Um, he just came. He came. He just came up with a couple questions to ask me regarding the album Forever Cruising that just came out. And um, we're also just going to talk about just general musical things that just kind of happened during the journey. Exactly. And um, cool. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hey, guys. My name is Lorenzo. Um, Andrew and I have been friends for years. We met in college. And um, yeah, we've been playing and making music together for many years now. And um, yeah, as Andrew said, Andrew just released his his debut LP, his first album, entitled forever cruising congratulations once again thank you yeah um yeah and so we just had this idea i just thought like why don't we do an interview because i'm sure a lot of his fans and um you know soon to be and yet to be fans would would enjoy just hearing him just talk about it so um yeah what do you think you ready Should yeah we get into it? let's let's get into it cool so i was gonna say or here's how i wanted to start so before we get into breaking down the album Oh, that's the other thing we wanted to say. So we're going to do a track-by-track track breakdown of the album so that Andrew talks about every single song on the record. But before we do that, I wanted to just talk about some of the big picture stuff and general stuff around okay. it first. So my first question is, after releasing three EPs, so we uh -huh. talked about your three EPs the last time we talked in that other okay. series of videos. Um, after releasing your first three EPs, how does it feel to finally have a full-length album out? Well, it feels great. Uh, <laughs> it's always been a um, a goal of mine to have a full length album out, and uh, I, I've already put out three EPs, and you know I thought it would be I thought it wouldn't really uh, be super necessary, or I don't know the best move to put out another EP. I feel like um, I mean as an artist, I, I feel like you, uh, I should have you know like a full length album out. And it was time. So, yeah, and, and yeah, and so I'm glad I did it. It's just something that I w uh, I'm glad I kind of got out of my system too. Um, yeah, so overall, I feel great about that. <laughs> nice. That's amazing, man. Um, so the next question then was, what was the most difficult thing about it? Was it writing, recording, producing, promoting? Yeah, um, the most difficult thing was probably... Um, just trying to, uh, push the boundaries. Um, since I started producing this EP on my own or this full length, um, I've, I've only had probably up to like two to two and a half years of experience in just like being a producer and mixer. And so, um, there was still a lot of things that I didn't really know how to do in terms of like the production and, the mixing but um it was difficult but at the same time it was like a good challenge for me to um learn how to you know edit things or you know how i should mic certain instruments and um you know, how i should mix it in a way to make it sound good and so that was the most difficult part um yeah so you produced and mixed and mastered it, right? You did everything yourself. Yeah. You wrote all the songs. Yep. It was just, so I guess the only other help you had, I guess, was that you had. I had Joey and Ed play on it as well. They played right. drums and bass. Okay, got it. Yeah, so Ed and Joe, yeah. two other musicians play drums and bass, and then everything else was totally just done by yeah, you. Yeah, I wrote the songs. Yeah. I sang the vocals, played all the guitar parts. Right. Yeah. Dude, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> and then again, this was, right, the second project you've ever done that for. So your third EP, Cocoon Days, right, was the same deal, right, where you produced, mixed, yeah. and mastered everything. That was like and my you, first project ever as a producer, pretty much. And you had, and again, it was the same situation where you had Ed and Joe play drums and Ed bass. Ed and Joe played. And then you you took care of everything else. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. That's super cool. So you still felt like on this LP, you there was still plenty to learn, plenty that you were sort of doing for the first time. Oh, or yeah. That you were figuring I out was, how to do. I was my own lab rat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Dude, that's awesome. Okay. So yeah, so the most difficult thing was 
basically, as you said, mostly just production stuff. Yeah, I, but at the same stuff. time, it's hard to say that it was difficult because it was a lot of fun at the same time. Like, sure. Just, it, was yeah. a, it was a cool learning experience. And, right. But I'd say the most difficult part was just thinking about how I'm going to put it out um, because that's something that I, I don't think I'm super good at, um, releasing music in the most effective way. Um because it's just it's it's fun to make it, but putting it out there and making sure it gets heard is is that's the hard part. So I was going to ask this question a little later, but because yeah. you bring that up, I'll ask it now. Okay. Um, so what do you, based on what you said, what do you make of the role of social media in promoting music nowadays? Well, um, I'd maybe say, maybe for you or in, or yeah. in general. Well. Um, this is what I think, but I think um, Instagram is like the social media that most people use. And um, it's gotten to the point where Instagram is not just a social media, but it could also be like a search engine or just like like right. a like their home page or like the like the kind of like a Reddit <laughs> Reddit or um Right. It's You're like, talking about the explorer yeah, page, yeah. Yeah. Like um I mean, I don't know why I mentioned Reddit because I never go on Reddit, but right. <laughs> but yeah, Instagram has kind of became like the main source of information in a way for for people, I, I'd say. And so, um, and I feel like I had the most um, people that I can reach through Instagram, and so I, I I pretty much did most of my promotion and just kind of like making sure you know, I let people know about it through Instagram, actually. And then I post, you know, a little th stuff on YouTube and Facebook as well. Um, so, yeah, in terms of social media, I think it, it works really well for promoting things because because it's kind of like everyone's newspaper in it's a way. Just, yeah, it's just yeah. the way to reach people nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have Twitter? I do, but I don't. I don't use it. You don't post on it. <laughs> Have you mentioned? Have you have you you haven't announced your your record on? No, on I, yet? I should though. What about Facebook? Facebook, um, I'm, s I'm no. <laughs> so you've only yeah. So you've only posted I've, I've on. Only, you've yeah. only used Instagram to see. And that's why I said I'm not good at promoting uh, promoting my stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, I tried. Yeah. But then I think there are a lot of things. I mean, the, doing this interview is another way to you know promote the album as well. Totally. And so um, I think there are a lot of things that you can do besides social media, like stuff like this. Yeah. And also reaching out to blogs that right. that would you know post about you. Definitely. Um, you know, just playing shows. Um, just you just got to be everywhere. Just right. Got to be everywhere and and let yourself be known. Totally. Yeah. Right. And I mean, yeah, in this day and age where, I mean, so many things are moving online, obviously. Yeah. And, and I mean, because like you said, for you as an artist, you know, you said, you know, promoting it or announcing it on all these different social media platforms might not be your favorite aspect of, yeah. of the process, right? Or, yeah. um, or the, it might be more, more difficult for you. Yeah. And you have, I'm sure it's, there's plenty there, there, there are definitely plenty of artists out there who probably feel the opposite where perhaps making the music or recording it or, you know, is, is more of the, the bigger challenge yeah. or, and, you know, promoting or, or just being on social media and creating a, say like a brand or, or posting consistently and getting people's attention is just something that they're naturally more comfortable with yeah. or that they enjoy doing more uh -huh. or that they're, you know, good at. And, um, you know, then there's plenty of artists like you who might feel like that's just one aspect of the game that yeah. is just not their favorite part or they don't feel like yeah. they're that great at it just yet. Yep. Um, and that's, that's I think, really an interesting thing nowadays. Obviously, again, just like we were just saying, just because nowadays, I mean, the Internet and social media is everything when it comes exactly. to getting your art out there. And there's so much content and media that everyone is exposed to every single moment. Right. And so um, you, you kind of have to put in that extra push to make sure you're all constantly coming up on their screen <laughs> yeah just to get people's attention yeah. and have to remember, have yeah. to remember that you posted something yeah that's true okay cool interesting um what was your favorite thing about making this album favorite thing about making the album um was i get i think i think it was the learning process of you know learning new production techniques or editing techniques um, because 
that's just something that you learn once and you can just keep using it for other things that you can do. Right. And also, um, yeah, like the songs that I wrote, I feel like these are probably some of the best songs I've written too, I'd say. And so just being able to um, just like sit back and listen to the whole thing at, at its fully finished form was a, definitely like a rewarding experience it was really fun yeah i bet yeah by the way i think so too i think some <laughs> some of your best songs on this on this new project Thank for you. sure um and that's said that's honestly saying a lot because you know as we've talked about before i think all of your projects have been excellent like all three of your eps are great i think you're a great songwriter so <laughs> part of the reason why we're doing this interview because i because i enjoy you so much as an artist uh, i love your stuff and uh yeah, I want to help. I want to help get the word out there and help you promote it because I think it's. I want people to hear it. Thanks. Um, along those lines, one more th- question: uh, yeah. What are you most proud of about the project? Um, I'm proud that it it was mostly me. Um, I, yeah, I because yeah, I feel like these songs really uh, represent me. Um, I tried. I tried my best to put the most me in it. And even when people listen to it, I feel like they 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 kind of learn more about my personality, and it kind of confirms things about me. And so yeah, I didn't try to you know be like anything else or anyone else. I just try to be as much as me as I can. And I think it came out the way that that I wanted it to. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's an awesome something. thing to hear. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I think of what, what, I mean, how, how I, how I could add to that. I mean, I was going to say maybe some artists don't feel that way. Maybe, maybe when they're still writing songs, yeah, they um, don't feel like th- maybe the song really reflects them. Like it could yeah. be more of a, um, you know, again, like more of a general or universal theme or yeah, something like that. Whereas you feel like you, your person, your personality yeah. really shines through in your, in your songs. Because, uh, I mean, like a lot of, a lot of great songs out there, 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 there's so many people that are, um, involved in making, making that project. Like there's more than one writer. Right. There's, you know, probably another producer and another engineer and, um, you know, there's other musicians that played on it. So, so like that just kind of becomes like, um, like a product of so many other people putting in their input and their, their playing and their right. writing and all that. And so it just kind of becomes a whole combination of things, but then, um, which is fine, which is cool. But then it, it, you can't really know, um, the person from listening to that i feel like because it's not mostly them yeah so you're saying not only just from a songwriting perspective but actually from even i think you're also talking about right in terms of production and the way that you chose or the or the way that you particularly strum the guitar versus the way someone else if they would have played that part yeah um that's that's really interesting to hear but i want to almost take it back a step and and break it down to the songs themselves and when you say how you're you feel like you shine through your songs what is it do you think about that do you have you figured out what it is about the way you write a song or your lyrics that you feel like you're able to really channel yourself and really like see yourself and and um show yourself in your through your songs yeah, um, I guess like in terms of like lyrics and um, the writing and well, um, well, the thing about these songs, I feel like they're not they're not very uh, dynamic in a way. They're all just kind of like cruisers. <laughs> yeah, and so it just kind of stays in the pocket and just kind of like uh, you just kind of like just cruise along with it. And and I feel like that's kind of like my personality too. Like I don't <laughs> I'm. I don't really have huge ups and downs. Mm. Um, I mean, although I, I, I mean, everyone does, but then I feel like most of the time I, I'm, <laughs> you're forever cruising. I'm forever cruising. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> and I guess, yeah, that's, that's one aspect that kind of uh, represents me very well through these songs. Plus um, <laughs> I just try to be as honest as I can with like my experiences and just like things that I felt. And so um, I didn't try to, I, I don't, 
I don't think I made up any story through these songs. I feel like they're all pretty, um, you know, honest songs that came from real experiences. Um, yeah. They say honesty usually gets the best songs, creates, you know, makes, yeah. the best, makes for the best songs. And I, I don't know. I'm not good at c- coming up with a story or I'm not good at like right. trying right. to like write something that I didn't experience in a way. Totally. Yeah. Totally. I get that. I mean, you have... I mean, even like take a songwriter like Alec Benjamin, who maybe yeah. you know we, we could compare some of your some of your stuff to. Not to say you sound like him or anything like yeah. that, but you know it's like a singer songwriter vibe. And he, it's you. I just thought of him because you bringing up stories, right? Yeah, like, yeah. He talks a lot about how when he writes songs, he does sort of take a little bit of something that happened to him but then he kind of creates this uh-huh. whole other fictional story or these okay. other characters and that is comfortable for him and yeah. he's good at writing a song that way whereas for you you're kind of the opposite you're like yeah. i couldn't i can't write it as a character or from someone else's perspective yeah. like it is truly you all the way through yeah. lyrically and, and in that song so uh-huh. i think that's awesome and i think that you know thinking just thinking on that and just quickly thinking back to some of your older stuff again, like going back to some of your other EPs, like you had a song on the same difference EP called Drew, which was just you sort of talking again. The like, funny thing about that one is it's, yeah. it's only on the physical CDs. It's not on like, Oh, it's the, not, it's not, it wasn't a digital it's, release. I guess it's like a bonus, bonus track for right. anyone who has the actual CD. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not out there on the internet at all. No. Oh, I didn't. I never knew that. Um, yeah, sorry. What, what you were saying about that? Yeah, well, it was just that. So then, yeah, I guess a lot of people out there wouldn't have heard that song then unless yeah, they bought it. It's an acoustic track. Yeah. Um, and I was, I brought yeah. it up because talking about how you, that was a direct, um, um, you know, you were just talking about your personality in that song, yeah. right? And so <laughs> that's just one example, though, of I think that's right that in your in your songwriting and through your lyrics, you are pretty personal. And, yeah. Um, n- again, not to necessarily say you. I mean, I guess you do. I was to say that you would like reveal some some deep secrets or anything like that when no. I say reveal, but just that me knowing you, people yeah. who know you, and then listen to your music. Agree, and they say the same thing. They say like I, it's it feels very authentic, and I can uh-huh. tell it's you, and it like it makes them like it's very endearing. It makes them <laughs> smile and laugh or whatever yeah. because you do come through, shine through the songs, and um, it does, it does, it does sound very genuine uh-huh. and authentic. And you're that same, you're that way on on stage as well. You're just very much yourself in the moment. <laughs> you don't try to necessarily you know, I don't know, be something else, yeah. you know, and you've talked about this before too. You, you're just, you seem very comfortable in your own skin and quote unquote being yourself. Yeah. And I've always thought that that's one of the most, um, sort of like endearing and enjoyable and just fun aspects <laughs> of you as a musician and songwriter uh-huh. and performer, uh-huh. you know, Thanks. you just get all a drew. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So you're most proud of the fact that it's, it's you that, you know, the, the songs and the uh, and the recording and the production was was yeah. you. Do you happen to have a favorite song? My favorite song is probably. Man, I, I was know, asked. Got to be a really. I asked. I was asked this yesterday. Um, I'd say overall, blue. Nice. <laughs> I I honestly had no idea what to expect just because yeah, I mean, there's I, so that's a really hard question. There's so many there's, great um, songs on this yeah. album. Yeah, the funny thing is right now on Spotify, the top five songs uh-huh. on on my Spotify artist yeah. page are yeah, actually yeah. the top five songs that I thought would be the top five songs. That's funny. Let me guess. Can I guess? Okay, yeah, take a guess. Uh, blue, blues up there. Again. Again. Alive. Yep. Don't you worry. Oh, it was okay. for a little bit. Okay. But right okay. now it's not. Um right now. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> um hmm. Um I'll say anything left. Anything left is on there. And I think I wanna. Mm. Yeah. Is that it? So it's again the first three tracks. Right. Or first four tracks. Okay. Because it's again anything left, blue. I think I wanna in alive. That's so great. Those are good ones. <laughs> those are those are the 
Oh, another shot, right? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. We are drinking whiskey. Why is uh, we are forever cruising? <laughs> um, yeah, man. No, yeah. Um, thank you, sir. <sighs> Cheers. Cheers to forever cruising. Congrats once again. Thank you. Thanks for the interview. Of course. Scotch, scotch, scotch. I like scotch. <coughs> okay. By the way, uh, yeah. I'm actually surprised that I haven't blew my nose once. Yeah. Because I've had allergies all day, and I thought my face was just going to be a mess throughout the whole... I got worried for you. I was like, oh, no, I wonder if he's going to feel like doing this tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I get allergies a lot a lot as well, and yeah. it's, it's not fun. I'm allergic to pollen for sure. Mm-hmm. Every spring, I just get into this allergic mess. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it goes away soon. Glad we could still do I this. know. I took I looked I took some Allegra today, but it didn't work. With, mm. I no feel Claritin, like no Claritin D. Claritin doesn't work for me. Uh, oh really? W- with allergy medicines, they're like a hit or miss. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Just so you guys know what works for Andrew and what doesn't. Yeah. Um. Cool. Well, I think that just about kind of does it for the. For the up top stuff, I think if we're ready, we can do let's let's do the album breakdown. Let's do it. Okay, so track by track breakdown of Forever Cruising. Uh huh. So the first song on the album is Again. Um, this is one of my favorites on the album. Yeah. Because it sounds so different from your usual sound from uh-huh. any everything you've ever done before. And I would say it's definitely the most rock and roll song you've ever done. Yeah, probably. Right? <laughs> um yeah, why don't you take it from there? All right, well, track one, again, it's about just trying to, like, rebuild a, or, you know, trying to recover a relationship. Not necessarily, like, a romantic one, but just anything in general. Um, it starts off by saying that, like, I called to, you know, try to, try to you know, make it right. Um, and the chorus is, you know, a simple one-liner that repeats, I just want to make it right again. Yeah. Second verse is, is you know, still me on the phone <laughs> saying, uh, I call, or... You hang oh, up I, the phone and yeah, sigh. I, <laughs> yeah. I hang up, I, yeah, I sigh. Um, damn, why am I blanking on the lyrics right now? But yeah. <laughs> you need um, another shot. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, it's about calling, and then I, I put down my phone and sigh. There we go. Right. Um, and then um, just goes into the chorus again. The lyrics are pretty simple, I'd say. There's not a lot going on lyrically, I but love I love them. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's um, there's a lot of movement in that song, for sure. What like, did you do, Andrew? What did you do to someone that you had to make well, something it right was, again? It was it uh, was about my dad. Actually, we kind of mm. got into this little argument. <laughs> yeah. But then, um, you know, I just realized it's not worth it. It's not worth, uh, you know, uh, being in, being on bad terms. And was that a real, um, again, was that a real story where you, you called him to try to, to make things right? Yeah, I, like, called him and texted him. Um, I mean, he gets he gets pretty, like, <laughs> like emotional. Uh-huh. Uh, he can stay, he can get kind of, like, stubborn and... Um, like he can just kind of like dwell in his mad, his, his madness. And so, <laughs> gotcha. Uh, I mean, I'm kind of not like that, and so I can kind of break out of that easy. easy. Yeah, you're forever cruising. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool. Man, we're getting deep and personal. Any, yeah, any. <laughs> that's what these interviews are for. <laughs> um, any, uh, anything else you just want to say about about again, this song again? Um. It's yeah, like you said, it's definitely one of the most rock and roll songs that I've wrote. Yeah, and um, I I wanted to actually do I wanted I was actually trying to go for that type of sound when I was when I began to write it. Yeah, and um, I'm glad it turned out the way it did. Yeah, me too. Okay, 
Track two, Anything Left. Anything Left. I um, love the guitars and the melodies on this song and yeah. the short but very tasteful solo. <laughs> so this is one of my favorites too. Yeah. Um, well, this one was written uh, during a time when I felt like, like an era has come to an end. Like, you know, like life just kind of moves in eras. Like you have like chapters, your yeah. chapters. Yeah, yeah. And um, this this was the time when I was still living in Northridge. Mm -hmm. And uh, I graduated but then after i graduated a lot of you know i st i uh you know a lot of friends that i used to hang out with you know moved out of northridge they either went back to where they were from or you know they had other jobs that kind of required them to move or you know and like you know like any type of relationship that i had throughout my college times um it all kind of started to fade out um and just kind of and just kind of like everyone just kind of had their own next chapters to move on to and then um at a at a certain point i was like yo where did everything just go like why am i the only one left here and yeah. then um yeah that song was kind of about me just kind of questioning whoa is there like anything left like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah what made you because that was years ago right that I mean, was years ago that, yeah so what made you when you were writing this record do you remember w why that all came to mind you were thinking about that period which was you know years in the past yeah um i mean because i just kind of found myself just still living in northridge area without really feeling like it was necessary for me to be there because back then I had most mm -hmm. of my friends there. I had school. Um, I was working kind of around there too. Right. Um, I had a house that I lived in with a bunch of other roommates that I was good friends with. But then after I graduated college in, in 2015, um, yeah, there was really no reason for me to be there. Um, and so, yeah, I was just kind of questioning, like, yo, what's what's here that's going to, you know, keep me here? Yeah. Yeah. Or rather the reasons that you had originally been there yeah. had all left and were gone. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't know that. <laughs> cool. Anything else you want to add about anything left? Um, I love the guitars. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's, yeah. it's truly, even, like, not only just the song, but I think production-wise, it's just one of my favorite songs I think you've ever done. It bumps. You it said that goes. about again too. Yeah, no, for sure, <laughs> for sure. I'm gonna probably say that about a lot of these songs. Um, cool. Okay, track three, your favorite on the record, um, Blue. Yeah, I mean, when I say it's my favorite, I just like it a tiny bit better than right than everything else. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Um, this I, one's I, I cool. It. I mean, I love the guitar riff. I mean, I love, I love, uh, you know, even just what Joey and Ed did. I mean. No, yeah. I don't, I don't want to exclude them out, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of the music, I, I I really like it, and I feel like it's it's really it definitely has my sound to it in a way. Like um, like again, and anything left kind of sounds like a newer thing that I did. Uh huh. But blue kind of sounds a little more classic Andrew classic Young. Classic Andrew Young in a way. Um, I guess like what I the the parts that I feel like sounds like classic Andrew Young is um <laughs> well uh I guess like uh, this is what I think is in the verses like cuz it just has like a simple beat to it mm -hmm. and then it's just like simple chords and just singing singing on top of it which which is like me mostly it's I lo I love a simple beat and then just like simple chords and singing on top of it um okay yeah and so you mentioned you mentioned Ed and Joe. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So you said you loved what they did on this song. Yeah. So that that brings a question to mind for me. Usually, at what point in the process do they do you get them involved? Do they get involved? So, I mean, you have a the full song basically written, and then yeah. do you jam live and you have them write the parts on the spot, or how does that usually tend um, to work? I usually make a demo first, like. Um, I'd program the drums a little bit, um, but I wouldn't really like program it too much. I'll just put a drum loop in there, like a hi hat, kick, snare beat, and then that's enough for Joey to be like, "Yep, I know exactly what to do on this." And um, for gotcha. for Ed or nope, I'm huh? uh, or nope, I'm gonna scrap this and just do my own thing. Does yeah, he ever do that? yeah, sure he does that sometimes yeah, too, right? Um, 
Shout out to Ed and Joe, by the Shout way. Shout out to Ed and Joe. Um, and then for Ed, uh, I just, I just think I just kind of trust him. I mean, I trust Ed and Joe. I, I trust both of them. Right. But right. For, but for, I mean, I, I, I just don't play any bass on my demos because. Right. So you can you can program some simple drums so yeah. just to get the basic feel or groove yeah. and beat a lot of the time. Also, but... I like to play along to a drum beat when I record demos too. Gotcha. Instead so, of just a metronome click. Yeah. Okay. And so that's why I always put a drum loop in my in my demos. Yeah. And then for Ed, I just I just throw it at him and kind of see what happens. <laughs> Yeah. And then the, yeah, and then the magic always happens. Yeah, cool. Okay, nice. One thing I wanted to say about Blue is that I remember we had a conversation about this a while when you first wrote the song before the, the album was yeah. done, and I remember you saying how when you wrote that song, you were almost surprised at the fact that like no one had written the chorus. Like yeah. that because obviously the concept of sadness or missing someone uh -huh. is a common or universal theme in music and in pop music, of course, right? Like love songs and, and sort of being a bit heartbroken. And and you phrased it so directly, I, I, I feel so blue, missing you yeah. is the main hook, it's the yeah. main lyric. And yet it doesn't feel cliche or stale a, at all. And it manages to feel fresh and fun. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, I was just I was just wondering what what you what you had to say about that, if you if you had anything to say. About yeah, that, well, to um, to that. after I wrote that, I was like, this is cool. Um, I'm yeah. gonna stick with it. But like, I just I didn't get too excited about it in the beginning because I thought maybe like I might it might just be like an end of moment thing where like I'm really stoked about it. Right. But then like it never kind of it never really like made me feel like it was lame or anything. <laughs> and it ended up becoming your favorite song on yeah, the record. Yeah, I just, I yeah. Just, yeah, like, anytime I write something, I try not to get too excited about it from the start. Mm, that's because, interesting. Yeah, because, like, I mean, I feel this way with, like, pretty much all my songs. Like, I always end up feeling, like, a little cringy listening back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but then, like, I tried not to get too excited about it because just in case I might cringe myself out later. Yeah. And so I just kind of like wrote it and, and just kind of let it be. But then it even throughout all this time, I never felt like it was lame or anything. I was so. going to say, so then these songs end up standing the test of time. When yeah. the song passes the test, stands yep, the test of time, yep. then you realize it's not cringy or bad. Or you yeah. end up being like, I do, I do really like this song. Yeah. That's really cool. That's great. Uh -huh. um, I was trying to think. I thought there was one more thing I wanted to, you had just reminded me, something you said that I was going to say about, about this one. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, this is one of my favorite ones to play live. Uh -huh. Um, I love the, I love the leads, <laughs> which, which, which reminds me. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, I have been playing lead guitar for Andrew for years. Um, flex. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, um, ever since, I mean, really since your first EP. Yeah. I mean, we've played probably almost close to a dozen shows together yeah. where I played the leads and it's always been a pleasure. It's always been so fun just because, again, just because I love the songs, you're always so fun to perform with because you're hilarious and you always sound great. <laughs> and um, this is... <laughs> and <laughs> stop, stop. Um, no, but for real, for real, it's okay. all it, it all comes from a place of love. I know yeah. I'm, I'm tidal waving you, as we say, <laughs> but um, it's it's all genuine. Yeah, um, yeah man, uh, this is blue is another one where I love the leads. Really fun to play. Um, as soon as it comes in, it's just like a ooh. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I improvise a little bit on the solo and everything yeah. too, kind of make it my own, just 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 a little bit. This just a touch. I mean, lyrically, I'd say it's pretty straightforward. It's just you know about a right. romantic relationship that didn't be, end up being successful, and, and then you just kind of feel like you miss that person. Yeah. That's basically what it comes down to. Yeah. <laughs> well, so you had another great a young track off of the debut LP, Forever Cruising. Okay, track four. I think I wanna. I think I wanna. Um, I wrote this song. Um, this one kind of took a while to write, actually. Um, I wrote this song about my experiences traveling to Tokyo back in 2015 for the first time. Hmm. And um, that was the first time I ever traveled alone. Um, and 
it was such a random thing too because I I random because uh, originally I had to fly out to Korea um, just out of nowhere one time because my grandma passed away and so I had to attend mm-hmm. that funeral and stuff. But then Korea is like super close to Japan, and so I ended up taking a trip out there on my own too, and I stayed there for like two or three days, and um, and that was the first time in in a whole other country by myself, and it there was like this there was like this feeling that I had where it was just very like like liberating to like be in a whole new place by myself and try to like figure out how to do things and how to get by and how to survive, and yeah. Um, yeah and then that just kind of and also the city is such a beautiful place it, Tokyo is one of my favorite places in the world mm-hmm. I'd say and um, yeah just being out there just kind of made me feel like I need to just make the most out of life and then like that song is just about me wanting to just like um, just make the most out of the moments and like that's how I felt over there but then it should apply to just life in general just trying to like you know make the most out of your moments try to make make the most out of you know everything that you your life and um yeah it's just about being free and trying to just do whatever you want to do yeah yeah that's beautiful man (laughs) I didn't know that Uh, first of all sorry to hear about your grandmother um yeah, I was going to say, I remember that lyric from the song. You say, I want to make the most of all my days. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, then, and th- yeah. so, see, that's exactly why we're doing this kind of thing. Because when you get, when you, people hear that, it gives so much more context yeah. to a lyric like that. Yeah. And you understand where that came from and what you're experiencing and feeling at the time. Yeah. And why something like that comes out. Yeah. Um, I would have never known that. Yeah. And then um the the little there's like a little like um part at the end of the song where you can just hear like little little bits and pieces of people talking. Mm-hmm. And actually um in 2016 I went there again actually because I just knew I had to go back. With Scott, right? Yeah, I went with Scott. Yeah. And then um yeah, like during that time I brought my camera with me and then I just took like a bunch of like video clips. And then um, I ended up taking, like, just little bits and pieces of, like, the audio of, all all, of like, a bunch of these videos that I took. And I just kind of, like, sewed them them together to make, like, a a background talking kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of my favorite parts on the whole record. (laughs) Just because, again, you talking about how you come through your songs and it's very much you. Like, just having a real actual voice recording, just just audio clip of just you and Scott just walking through the city and just talking and just saying, like, where are we? What's the name of this place? (laughs) You're like, we out here. You know, you hear you guys are we out here. Like, it's just, it puts a smile on your face and makes you kind of (laughs) laugh a little bit. And, um, yeah, I thought that was a really cool, cool choice. Yeah, like, when I took these videos, I never really put them out anywhere but then like i just knew i was gonna use them somehow and i'm glad that i took the audio little pieces of the audio from these videos and added it to the song actually that's awesome that's really cool cool anything else you want to add about uh i think i wanna uh that's that's actually one of the first songs that i've wrote written for the album Mm. actually yeah it took me a long to write because i I wrote a little bit took a break on it Mm -hmm came back wrote a little bit more yeah did you know that it was you were writing it for the album like at that point did you know you were no planning i was this just LP? trying to write i was just right. trying to write something gotcha yeah and it ended up being one of the first things you had written of everything that ended up yeah. on the album yeah got you cool okay the last track on the first half on side a uh track five don't you worry uh-huh. So when I re-listened to this album the other day to get ready for this uh-huh. interview, this was like my surprise new favorite. And I told you this the other day when we were talking yeah. about it. Um, it was just, it was one that just stood out to me uh, in a new way and that I just really, really enjoyed. Um, and like you said, it's, it's a low-key banger. It's a slow burner. It's a really yeah. good one. Um, and again, I think the production came out really well on yeah. this song. Um there's one other thing I wanted to mention, which was that um, it, you have a line in the song about painting someone a picture. <laughs> I didn't know you paint. <laughs> Do you paint? No, it was it's <laughs> metaphorical. Ah, okay. Yeah. 
Well, um, the reason why I, I wrote that was because uh, I was kind of in this long distance relationship, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then um, I just knew it wasn't gonna ha- work, mm. and so like instead of me just being very direct about direct about why I wouldn't want to invest myself into this anymore, mm-hmm. I'd rather just kind of like. Sh- paint the picture and be like yo this is what's happening and this Mm. is what's going on just look at it it's very (laughs) obvious that you know it's not gonna work eventually Hmm. and then um yeah okay that's what that line kind of meant got you yeah got you um well my next question that fed off that was gonna be i thought you were gonna say that you in fact paint i I interpreted it (laughs) that line literally yeah um i was gonna ask if you know do you feel the need to be creative through multiple outlets like not just music um and if so do you think those things those other creative pursuits or those other creative outlets have an effect on your songwriting like for example i just thought of when you're, you're a photographer you started a whole instagram page just dedicated to your photography, which is something you got into a couple of years ago. Yeah. Why don't you, can you talk about that a little bit just in terms of, you know, yeah. that or maybe any other creative sort of outlets or pursuits? Well, I just, I decided to get into photography. I mean, I didn't think I would, you know, um, get really serious about it, but I just wanted like a uh, high quality photos that I can use to just kind of like, uh, just showcase what I do. Um, uh, I mean, I, I mean, iPhones are great and everything, but, um, I wanted to get, just kind of get a little, something more, a little high quality mm-hmm. to just cause, um, yeah, just to like, you know, showcase what I do. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I produce, I play guitar, I write, and, like I perform and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just kind of wanted to present all of that through just like high quality pictures. Got and it. So that's why I, I just decided to get into photography Mm. and also i just like to shoot other people too yeah uh not with a gun (laughs) gonna make a bad joke about that (laughs) but yeah i just like i mean i mean you know i shoot you all the time uh when i have my camera oh you mean like photo shoots yeah yeah we've done a couple yeah i just like to shoot and just kind of like which i never posted any (laughs) any photos from nothing to you the photos are great i just uh yeah i mean like i just like to just you know see what people are doing and just take a little snap of that and then like and just in this age yeah. of where like we were talking about where instagram and social media is so big and everything yeah. is so visually oriented these yeah. days i think that was a really cool smart thing to get into yeah um do you feel like getting into photography has had any kind of effect on on your music on your songwriting um Maybe not. I mean, maybe, maybe not in terms I, of the content of the songs, but uh, more just like you were saying in terms of just a way to promote yeah. or create like a visual aesthetic to, to accompany the, the music. Yeah. Right. I mean, I guess like, uh, well, recently I was just looking back on all these photos that I took because I, 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 I have it all organized in my computer. Like this, like I have like folders for like each month mm-hmm. and like in, in, in each folder of the, of the month, I just have all the photos that I've took and, and sometimes I look back and it's kind of like going back on a journal or, or a diary and then I'm just kind of like reminded of like things that I've seen or or done through the photos. Yeah. And so in a way like that that could that could help me with my writing um especially when I when I need to like pull 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 from a memory or something like that. And yeah. So, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Um anything you want to add? Before we move on, uh, about don't you worry. Uh, no. Okay, that's it. All right. Well, that wraps up side A of Forever Cruising, <laughs> the debut LP from side Andrew Young, a. in stores now in your local Best Buy and that's Target funny, anywhere you... CDs are sold. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. it's not available on Target. <laughs> <laughs> it's not available on Target or Best Buy. <laughs> but anyways, um, uh, that's funny that you meant that. Yeah, but, that you say side A. Uh-huh. Like I said, if it's a vinyl, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but whatever. Well, yeah. I, I, I believe that uh, it, it'll get pressed. I hope, I hope in my heart that it gets pressed. <laughs> well, if not, it gets. Maybe uh, I, I don't know if I researched this wrong, but I was actually considering doing vinyls. Yeah, yeah. What was that? But like? then I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I put in the inf- info wrong, but it came out to like two hundred dollars a 
a press or something for like that. For one? For one. But that sounds ridiculous. So I'm yeah, pretty sure no, I... there's no way. Or, or, or there would be, you know... Um, like bulk prices like yeah when you, when, when you make a whole, a whole yeah batch, it's a lot cheaper um, well you know if it never gets pressed i, I will be depressed but woo, <laughs> dad joke <laughs> hey <laughs> but um hey that was a good one though yeah all right uh well why don't you tell tell the good people where uh, you can, they can hear it. They can't access it. It's available on all streaming platforms on the internet, like Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, all YouTube, those other ones. YouTube, There's SoundCloud, a, Bandcamp. Yeah. I don't know about Bandcamp. <laughs> <laughs> Frostwire, LimeWire, <laughs> Napster. Cool. Well, there you have it. Yeah. There's uh, There's the first half of forever cruising what do you think another shot is that is that what we're doing you want one i'm down i'll have i'll take one all right let's do it let's do it this is uh this is our way of getting into side b yeah (laughs) this is is us uh getting more alive (laughs) dude keep those jokes coming (laughs) Good healthy pour. Thank oh, you, sir. Yay. Shout out to 1871 Canadian whiskey. It's the first time we're having this. 1871 Canadian whiskey. This one's I, great. I, if I you want to try it, get it at Smart and Fun. Why don't you why don't you tell the people where what you told me when you bought this bottle about like the pricing of whiskey? This is a cheap whiskey and um I've seen like videos of people doing like uh taste tests and stuff. Uh huh. Are we not going to bump? Cheers. Okay. Bump. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I've, I've seen people do like blindfold tests of just like different types of alcohol. Mm-hmm. And it seemed like most times they liked the cheapest one. Hmm. And um, It's because most people are cheap. <laughs> Boom, another one. Bam. Um, and this one's not really considered an expensive whiskey. And, and it's great. I like it. Bam. Um, cheers. Uh, ah. Oh yeah. Okay. Side B. Side B of Forever Cruising. Okay. <laughs> cool. You good? Yeah, we good. Cool. All right, so Alive. Uh-huh. The first uh, track off Side B, track 6. Track six. So I was going to say, I think that other than the song Again, this is the other one which is the most different for you. Uh-huh. Um, I think it's very dancey. Mm-hmm. It's so funny because we, we, already, we already started talking about this song and then the, the it wasn't recording and the camera stops and so now we're redoing this. <laughs> <laughs> so it feels weird to go through this all again, but we'll do. Um, what can you do? Um, yeah. We're liars. We're actors. We're faking this I gotta, for you guys. I gotta get, uh, or I need to figure out the camera situation so that I don't have to worry about the camera stop recording at, like every fifteen minutes or something. Right. Yeah. Is it? Is you get no, a GoPro or something like? There you just go. Where I can just set it and just. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not your boy to answer questions <laughs> about about cameras. Yeah, but I mean, we we're good. Cool. Well, um, another shot? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Alive. Yeah. Track six. Um, so I was going to say, I think that other than the song Again, I think this is the other one which is the most different for you. Yeah. It's very dancey. Yeah. It's really, really fun. Um, it's another one of my favorites. Um, as soon as I heard it, I was I, I, I thought it was super cool. Um, so I'm just wondering what inspired you to make a song that had this kind of vibe and whether that was something that you set out to do intentionally. Yeah, well, um, this was kind of around the time when I started listening to Tim Atlas. Shout out to Tim. Shout out Tim. Yes. <laughs> yeah, love his, his um, stuff. Yeah, like his his. We were whole... just talking about his music video for his newest track, Dizzy. Mm-hmm. Which came like out his great. his whole uh, EP, All Talk. You know, it just kind of had like this cool like mid tempo, just like head bobber type of vibe. Yeah, and, and so. And I know I got David into it too, hmm. and then um, David was 
super hooked on that EP, and then like he just randomly mentioned that like he wanted to do like some kind of side project with me. Yeah, and so I just I just try to write something that I felt like he would like and I would like too, and so I just came up with like that little riff. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then um, I just sent it to Dave, and he loved it. And then, um, <laughs> but eventually, uh, nothing really happened between me and him. And I just gotcha. ended up just writing, finishing writing that song. And I track. kept it for myself. <laughs> I did not know that. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, and then uh, that's kind of how that happened. That song happened. Okay. So, okay, so that basically answers my question. I was going to ask next, do you tend to aim for a particular sound or style or genre when you start writing a song? Or do you just kind of start writing and just see where the music or the moment takes you? Like, just see where the song yeah. is leading you leading you down. So, you know, honestly, uh, trying to write like someone, trying to write and sound like someone else um, usually takes me a long time to do. It's um, good practice, right? As, it's good a, practice. as a songwriter yeah. to try to replicate someone else's But then when style. I just try to be myself, boom, it just <laughs> falls out of me. It falls into <laughs> place. <laughs> just makes you feel alive. Yeah. <laughs> and um yeah. And so So that was a yeah. case where you you set out to make that I, kind of yeah. dancey kind of vibe like yeah, kind of I, I along wanted the to lines make, in the yeah. vein of Tim Atlas. Remember you said it kinda of reminds you of like uh Remember the name of the band? Parents House. Kid Bloom. Kid Bloom. Yeah. I was gonna I was gonna mention this. It's funny you say that you were inspired by Tim Atlas when you wrote that song. Yeah. Because there's something about every time I hear one part of the song, it totally reminds me of Kid Bloom. Yeah. Another great new LA like psych band they like like they call themselves i think they call themselves um psychedelic disco uh -huh. it's like very dancey groovy it's like very currents era yeah. like tame impala tame impala currents era esque uh -huh. uh -huh. um and i but it's again it's so it was so different from you uh -huh. I, it's so great it sounds so good and it's such a fun song it was like a I, I was gonna say it's a breath of fresh air, and yeah. not to, that I don't want to make that sound like your other stuff is stale or not yeah. fresh, but it just it just was different, and I just thought that's, it was really fun. That's actually the same time around when I bought this software. Um, Cubase? No, um, uh, battery from Native Instruments, and it had mm -hmm. some 808s on there. Ah. Yeah, and I wanted to try to fuck with that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, and, and so um, that kind of contributed to that sound as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Anything else you want to add about Alive? Um, that's it for now. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But I mean, lyrically, it's just kind of about um, just yes. kind of like enjoying the moment again, once again, and. Right. Uh, you know, just like feeling. I mean, I guess it's it's regarding like a like a romantic relationship that has just kind of begun, mm. but you're just trying to like just you know enjoy that first initial stage of it and just yeah. like feeling alive. <laughs> yeah, just enjoying that honeymoon stage. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be in the honeymoon. <laughs> Shout out to an earlier Andrew Young a, a Young track. All right, sweet man, cool. Congrats on that song. I love that song. Um, that was a single too that that came out. Before oh, you album. put that out ahead of the album? That was a single. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah. That cool. and give it a try. Oh, oh, yeah. right. That's the one you did a video for. Yeah. Cool. Video. Is there a video perhaps to no. come for a live? Well, I do have an idea for it, but I don't know okay. if I'd actually do it. Okay. The idea would be of me being in like a little. Uh... <laughs> I never told anyone about this, but. <laughs> You know, like those, uh, like when you go to an arcade and then uh -huh. like, there's like those like driver games. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would just be in one of those, the, the little cars. Yeah. That's the whole video. Yeah. And then like, I'll just kind of be sitting, singing along to it and I'll just kind of be driving that car. I love that. That sounds um, super fun. You should I do mean, that. We should yeah. get some, someone out there. You should, you should make this video happen. <laughs> what is it about that? Do you like racing games? Do you like arcades? Um... 
No, but like it's I I like the <laughs> <laughs> No. No, I mean I like arcades. Don't like video games, don't like racing games, don't like arcades, but that's what my video is going to be. <laughs> um yeah, I mean like once again, it's just another one of those cruiser songs, you know, just in the pocket, just head Yeah, bombers. there you go. Okay. And so um just kind of reminds me of 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 me being in a car. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, I like that. That or, sounds like a fun video idea. Yeah. You should do that. It'd be, I mean, I kind of wanted to make myself look foolish in a way, like just, or you know, like those little uh, cars that you would see like outside of like, like Toys R Us or something, like those little things where you put a quarter in and it just kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you put a quarter in and you sit in it. Yeah. Uh, usually it's like a horse or something. Right. But yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I'd be on one of those and just sing along to the song. <laughs> <laughs> be a cheap video to shoot. Low low budget, easy to make. Yeah. Should do it. That's hilarious. Oh man. Okay. Interesting. Okay. All right. That's a live for you. There you have it. Yeah. Um, okay. Are we ready for this next one? Next one. Track seven. Do you Track know what the next song is? No words. No words. No words. <laughs> This one's beautiful. Um, I've gotten, I have, this song has made me emotional a few times mm -hmm. listening to this one. Um, it's very intimate. Um, and it, I mean, it just makes you feel like you're just sitting right there in the room where you're, <laughs> where you're playing and singing. I mean, um, I was going to ask, do you feel, do you feel vulnerable doing songs like this? Like where the production is so bare and the content of the song is so personal. Um, and you're like bringing the audience into like an almost private part of your relationship. I mean, not that there are any, again, deep secrets or anything like that being revealed here, yeah. but it does feel like you just bring the listener like right into the room where you are with your significant other. Yeah. Um, no, I actually don't feel I'm nervous or vulnerable nervous about or doing that. Like, that. like yeah. I think I, I really like the song and how it came out. Um, um, sorry. What was the question again? <laughs> Do I? I was asking if you if if a song like this, which yeah. sounds so vulnerable, which is such a like emotionally, um, like it's just like such a fragile. It sounds like it's hard to describe in a, in a sense. Yeah. I mean, in other words, it's it's not um, a song where there's double tracked vocals and yeah. things sound polished and it's. Um, it's pretty raw. Very, right, and it's very musical. Nothing like that. Yeah. There's, there's no drums or anything like that. It's like you said, it's it's just like, it sounds like yeah. a voice di memo almost. Yeah. Like it's just, literally it sounds like someone, you're just sitting in the corner of the room. Yeah. And you, it's oh, just you okay. sitting on the edge of the bed with you and an acoustic guitar and that's it. Yeah. Like there's a little bit of reverb on the vocals, but like that's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I actually, uh, when I wrote this one and I demoed it and I recorded it, I was like, yo, this doesn't need anything else. Like, I tried to, you know, play more guitar on top of it. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I tried to add a simple beat to it or something. Yeah. But it just didn't, it didn't really do justice. And so I was right. like, yo, this is just one of those just be in the room with me type of songs. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just, I mean, the, the guitar and you singing, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so I was like, this is just good as it is. Like, did you put some reverb on it in post? I did. Or was I, I put some okay. reverb on it. That's yeah. what I thought. Okay. So it wasn't, it wasn't, a, it wasn't just like a voice memo. No. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, it, it, it gives that, it very much gives that feeling. Yeah. It has that sound. And again, of course, lyrically, I think it's just a beautiful song. It's, I think, one of your most emotionally powerful songs wow. with such a bare, with such bare record, recording and such bare production. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just think this is, um, it, it's it's one of your, I think, like, sh shining moments. And, <laughs> and it's such a subdued, yeah. you know, not to say a small song, how to, how to describe it. It's such a subdued, you uh -huh. know, um, personal intimate moment and song and um yeah again i think it's yeah. one of the i think it's one of the most beautiful songs you've ever written thank you also um i mean i feel like most people they they like songs of mine that are um very narrative mm. like uh like storytelling type of songs 
Okay. Um, like earring and treehouse, for example. Yeah. That, you can just, I mean, I paint a, I paint a little picture. <laughs> <laughs> right. I shoot a little movie for yeah. And, and it put, I, there's very much a setting. It puts you yeah, right in a particular scene. You, yeah, yeah. And and I feel like this one does the same. Absolutely, no words. it definitely Absolutely. creates like a scenario. Right, and the listener just is invited into that moment. Yeah, yeah. While uh, like um, I'd say most of the other songs in in this whole album, they're more, they're more. The lyrics are a little more emotionally narrative. Uh. But um, no words. It's definitely like you could you you know what's going on in there once you hear it, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. No words. Um, bring seven, your bring eight. your tissues with you, folks. If you're gonna listen to this song, <laughs> this one's gonna get you. I tell you. Um, okay, we're almost at the end here. Track eight out of ten right now. Right now. Um, I've always loved this song. Yeah. This um, one's on Cocoon Days as well. I love every version. So you, there are actually three versions of this song. Yeah. So first of all, so what I wanted to say off top is that I think the production is great on each of them. And uh, it's different on each of them and great on each of them. Um, and I love the song enough that I'm really glad to have three different versions that I can listen to <laughs> and do. And I do, it's funny because I remember I was so used to the one on Cocoon Days, the track one that opened yeah. Cocoon Days. And I loved it so much that when I first heard the newer version on this album, I don't think I liked it quite as much. Yeah. But when I re-listened to this album a couple times to get ready for this interview, I think I do like this newest version mm. the best. I do think just the production, as you said, it just kind of bangs the hardest. Okay. It, just, it just bumps the most. Okay. And... um. Yeah, and so I wanted to ask what made you want to re-record this song for a third time Yeah, and release it and, and actually feature it on your f first full-length well, album. Um, on the Cocoon Days version, um, it's good, um, but uh, once again, Cocoon I would Days... Up that. I would up that to great. <laughs> it's, at, it's at least it's, great. It's, it's great. <laughs> but um, like Flex. I said, Cocoon Days is my first project ever like as a producer and right and so like there are definitely things about that song that are that i feel like could have been better and you wanted to yeah do like it doesn't it doesn't do just because it's like like songwriting wise it's like one of my favorite songs that i've written i thought so I knew, yeah i knew that yeah and so yeah. like i wanted to make sure that it's presented in in a very you know good way mm -hmm. and i don't think it was presented in the best way it could have through cocoon days ep okay. yeah and um i mean that's just me you know anyone else that listens to it can will i mean they'll they'll have their own opinion about it but they're not gonna really care whether it sure i about, mean about the same things that i care about right like i guess in terms of productions like production like it was a little bit more raw on the cocoon days ep and like um i wasn't as good as of a mixer during that time nor a mm -hmm. producer and so, um, yeah, I wanted to redo it because I love the song and I feel like it still fits the vibe of, of the Forever Cruising album too. Yeah, it fits on both projects. Yeah, it fits Absolutely. on both projects. And so I wanted to redo it. Like I didn't really change much at all in terms About of like, the song structure itself. and the and the parts, but I just wanted to just be a like a better recording and a better uh, better mix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You, I think you accomplished it without doubt. Uh, without a doubt. I Thank mean. You. Um, it's it remains one of my all time favorite Andrew Young songs, <laughs> um, and also it's funny because this is another song that just now when we were talking about it just reminded me of playing it live, and yeah. yet again this is another one of the songs that is always always one of my favorites to play the leads on live. It's a fun one, yeah, and it's such a um, it's not like a big super energetic you know anthemic song it's still a very pretty low-key like cruiser yeah it's pretty like gentle song but yeah. it's so pretty sounding and the, the all of the melodies and the lyrics and the the parts are so just just so great like, yeah it's just yet again just another one of my favorite songs here <laughs> so i'm really glad you ended up deciding to re-record it um because it, it remains to be one of my favorite songs of yours anything else to add about right now right now right um now? well it's funny. It's this song just kind of like, like you said. There's three versions of the song, mm -hmm. 
And it's funny because this was actually supposed to be the fifth song on the Good Night to That EP. <laughs> Good Night to That is like a That's band that I t- attempted to, to um, make happen. I mean, we do have an EP out. Good Night to That is a is a band that I tried to, uh, you know, do back in 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, we we did put a four song EP out and right now is going to be the fifth song but then it just didn't really make the cut at that time and so I kept it as an Andrew Young song um yeah and that's there's some history on that <laughs> okay some random facts for you so sorry so you said that uh right now almost made it or was on the good night to that ep no it no, almost no, made it almost it made there. it right which version any older uh was it the one that well back then i we were working on we, we were working with another producer and so it could have came out in a whole different way so you wait so you re, you recorded right now with a different producer no i never recorded that with any other producer but besides myself but uh-huh. that was going to be the fifth song in, of the record, but was that the version that you used on this LP or, or on Cocoon Days? No. So okay, so, so you actually happened, recorded it a fourth time. No. So so what happened was uh, we went into the studio to do the Good Night to That EP. Okay. We did four songs, and then at that time I was still working on the fifth song of the EP. Uh huh. But then and that's when I wrote right now. Okay. And then um uh. That ended up not being on the EP because, like, the band just didn't work out before we even was able to go back and do right now for the okay. EP. Okay. And so, um, yeah, I still like the song, whether or not it made the EP or not. And so I just decided to keep it for the Andrew Young stuff. And it, and then it first appeared on the Cocoon, Cocoon Days. Days. EP. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. I didn't know that either. Yeah. What songs did get recorded for the Good Night to That EP? There's Guy. Guy. Yeah. There's uh, Bad Timing. <laughs> yeah, uh, I remember that song. Jeez, it's, 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 I don't know, it's hard to remember. Okay. There's uh, like, yeah, yeah. There's like two four other, songs. Two others. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I still have uh, some demo version of Guy. Really? Um, I, yeah, I have I have one version of it which I always really enjoyed that song. Hmm. Um I mean the EP's out I there. I need a ver- I need a Oh, good, it's out. The, the good night to that EP is just it's out there online. So for super fans, if you, ever you can just find the good search night it up, to that yeah. EP. Where yeah. at? And everywhere. I'm going to check that it's out. It's on Apple Music, it's on Spotify, it's I didn't everywhere. I know that. It's just it's just Good night there. to that. That was <laughs> the name. Good night to that. that. That was the name of a band that I tried to start years ago. Good night to that. <laughs> Edward and Reese and me. <laughs> That's so great. I advised Andrew against using that name. <laughs> I was like, "Good night, good to, night that. to that." That doesn't sound like a band name. It can't. And Scott Andrew Schultz was like, "Ride the wave." That, that doesn't sound like a band name. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You never said that. You know, um, the, the, how I came up with good night to that was I was just talking with Scott Schultz mm-hmm. and then like he said, he, I forgot what we were talking about, but he was like, well, good night to that. And then I was like, yo, hold up. I like that. Like, <laughs> hold I like up. That phrase. <laughs> Let me That's funny. Just steal that for real quick. I like that. All right. Well, right now, anything else to add? Uh, that's it. Good night to that. oh man we are not funny um okay so track nine track nine free time free time time. this is a nice little song yeah it's a nice little acoustic it is um what came first i wanted to ask what came first when you wrote this one was it the riff was it the chords was it the lyrics the riff um yeah like i was just writing you know my typical D, A's, and G's type uh-huh. of songs. <laughs> I thought the riff sounded, um, I don't want to say interesting enough. It just sounded uh, like captivating enough. It was like such a hook yeah. that I thought this probably came first. Yeah. And then so I liked, I liked the guitar riff, but I just never really thought about the lyrics for it. And then uh, I wrote that at a time where I felt like I was like super busy um but then you know that was, it was also at the same time when i was you know in the in like the beginning stages of this relationship 
And then um, I just wanted to just like make it um, make it known. Yeah, make it make it known to this person that like you know uh, I've been super busy at the moment but like you know when i get that free time it's for you girl (laughs) 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 and so that's what that song is about nice yeah um the production came out great on this one too yeah again it sounds really good it's a a, it really is a nice it's really a nice song yeah once again i tried to you know add other things to it like i try to add a little beat to it some some more get uh yeah, but then like I was like, you know what? It just sounds good, just as it is. It's acoustic. It has some bass in it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and so I just kind of had to leave it as it is. Like, yeah. It's a nice song. It's a nice song. <laughs> um. Okay. Cool. Anything else to add about free time? free time? This one's like the. This one's like one of the most effortless songs that I've written. Hmm. I feel like it, just, like it kinda, just came together really quickly. It just came together, and I just threw it in the album. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah. Well, and you placed it right in the. You placed it yeah. in the nine hole. Yeah, the nine hole. <laughs> I always have thought that, and I don't think I don't think this is my least favorite on on, on okay. the record. I don't think I have any song that I dislike. Definitely, yeah. I, honestly, I don't. But. Okay. It's funny because I've always. This is going to be a kind of a side note from you, from your record in particular. Before we get to the last track, the finale, I've always thought that the maybe it's just a personal weird thing I have. I've always seemed to think that the second to last song on a project, on an EP or on an album from any artist, tends to be where they kind of bury what they think is <laughs> the like their least favorite song or like yeah. the the least great song, least yeah. good song on the album. Just because it's like if you've listened this far, you're gonna you're gonna listen to that one, and it's like the last one. You're gonna bring it home. You're gonna yeah. bring everything on the last track to you know always your first and last track got to be some of the some of the best yeah. songs on the project. And I think it's become this. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm onto something. Maybe it's just me. It's this <laughs> weird psychological thing yeah. I have now where so many times I'm listening to an album, I'll think like the second to last song is um just not as good just not as strong yeah. and i've and i you know just buried in there you bury it in there <laughs> you kind of tuck it in there yeah uh, and it's funny to hear you say because you just said you go not that it came together quickly but you go i just i just decided to just throw it on there yeah you know it wasn't like you're like this is my favorite song this is a single this is a hit you just go I- i'm gonna i'm gonna put it on there. i'm gonna I'm slip just... it in there. i'm gonna toss it on there <laughs> <laughs> slip slip free time in there. But it's really good. I like this yeah, song. I thanks. do. I do. Um so anyhow, there's our, our random side note on the on the nine mm-hmm. nine hole. Um that second to last track. Well, okay, we're already at the end. Last song. Last song. Give it a try. Give it a try. This is definitely another one of my favorites. This is another one that can make me emotional. Yeah. This um, one hits. It hits. I, this is <laughs> such a great song to end the record. Yeah. Um, so it's. I'm gonna let you speak on it, of course. But I just wanted to say that I, I know that this song is basically about not knowing what's coming next in in life, but sort of still hoping and trusting that yeah. it'll be something good. Yeah. And um, yeah. Why don't you Why don't you go ahead and and, and speak on that? Um. Well. <sighs> Like I've I've had nine songs written for the album for a long time, and I knew I had to add number ten in there too. But that yeah, tenth, got it. Got it's your first album, yeah, official LP. Got to be at least ten, ten tracks. Yeah. yeah. And so it took. I mean, it took a while for me to try to write the tenth one, the last one. And so um, one thing that I tried was just free writing, and so I took out my journal. I just just started writing. I didn't really care what I had in mind or anything i was just like yeah i'm just gonna write something meaning so, you just started writing lyrics y- yeah like is that just, different well, than I mean, what not you nece- usually do not, not necessarily lyrics i was just free writing i was like the pen's just gonna hit the paper and i'm just gonna fucking write oh almost like a journal or a diary entry yeah with, just started- but with no intention of of anything it's just whatever comes out comes out so you weren't trying to write a song no i was just trying to free write just like see what what can happen mm once the pen hits the paper interesting yeah and then and i mean because that's what free writing is you just kind of just 
ready, set, go. And you just start just writing. Just stream of consciousness. Just stream of consciousness, exactly. Mm. And so as I was writing, as I was free writing, um, a lot of the things that I wrote was like, whoa, I'm just I'm just writing. Here we go. Like, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. But That sounds know, almost like, like what happens in your mind when you meditate. You st- when you first start meditating, you start hearing yourself going, okay, I need to be calm. I need yeah, to yeah, meditate. Yeah. I'm trying to quiet my mind. Yeah. And you're, it's like that meta, it's that voice where you're just hearing yourself going, I'm doing the thing I'm trying to do. Yeah. I'm trying to concentrate on doing this thing. And then once as you go through that, it subsides and then you find something. Yeah, yeah. Or something else. And so, yeah, I just, I just kept writing and writing and writing. And then most of what I was writing was just like, I don't know what to do. Hey, I'm just writing. Hey, I hope something good comes out of this. And then... And then eventually I just stopped after a couple minutes and then like I read back and it was just the overall theme of like that free write was just like, I don't know what, what what's going to happen, but I just hope something good happens out of this. Mm. And then, um, boom, that was a topic to, to write about. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what Give It A Try is. And um, yeah, and that song, it's, it's about just kind of like not knowing what comes next you know, not knowing what to do at the moment, but just hoping that something comes and, you know, like it's about looking for inspiration, but I mean, it's, it's how you, it's a very open-ended song. You can take it however you'd want to. But, um, for me, how it, how that song came about was me just trying to look for something to feel inspired about because, um, I was kind of stuck in a rut at that time, just trying to write the last song of the record and nothing good was coming out. And so, um, yeah, that song is just kind of about like just searching for, for, for something. I did not know that was actually the last yep. song you wrote for the record. It ended up being the last song. Yeah. And then like, it's, it's, it's a really, the structure is really weird too, because there's a, there's a verse and then there's a chorus, but then like, I solo. realized, yeah, I realized, Guitar solo. yeah, I realized after the first verse and chorus, already two minutes of the song has gone by and so i'm like yo i can't just add another verse in there because that's just gonna be too long Hmm. and so i just decided to just add a bridge right after the first chorus and then um or was it a bridge or solo i forgot but it's the solo yeah there is no verse too it's just so it sounds like there's just like different parts of a song i think the little bridge the down section comes after the solo yeah okay yeah um if I'm if I'm remembering in the bridge, I write. Uh, Sometimes you're so hard to find, mm-hmm. but I still give it a try. Mm-hmm. Now it's, I think that's just me referring to just inspiration or a song. Like sometimes it stopped, it stopped recording. Uh, I was gonna ask you to check. No, no, but that was only like five seconds that we missed out on. Okay, good. But I was, I was, but I was saying that you know that that bridge is about just you know just sometimes it doesn't come easy you know that inspiration doesn't come to you easy all the time yeah but but you know you just even though it doesn't come to you you just gotta you know try give it a try to just look for it yeah Yeah. i love that i love that um (laughs) i mean i think that's the perfect conclusion to what the title of the record refers to forever cruising forever cruising it's you know Again, to talking about still hoping and trusting that it'll be something good, and yeah. no matter what comes, you're just gonna keep on, keep yeah. on keeping on. You're just gonna forever keep cruise. on keeping on. And also, like I, the re, the I thought about the title after I wrote all the songs. It kind of hit you what it meant. It, yeah, because I mean, because at that point, like I've already released three EPs, mm-hmm. and then um, I always want my my newest project to be better than the previous one Mm -hmm. and um you know and also just like it's uh it's it's just just an ongoing thing um of just like trying to be better than the previous one yeah it's forever cruising forever cruising (laughs) so i know what i know what forever cruising means just because i know you and we've talked so much about the songs and this record as it was being made and, and as you finished it. Yeah. Um, and then through your Instagram post, when you announced the release of the album, you had yeah. a long 
great uh, post that I loved sort of explaining what the title of the record means. Yeah. So I was going to ask, can you can you talk a little bit about what, again, just wrapping up, just talk about what the title Forever Cruising means. Forever Cruising. Life just keeps going on. <laughs> Life just keeps going on. And ideally you just want it to be better than than what it used to be you know yeah and um as long as you're alive time is just gonna keep moving for you and um you just gotta you just gotta make sure i mean i'm always reminded of what marston said professor marston yeah he said life is about you know making something better than you found it and I that once he told me that I have always held on to that. Yeah. And and it's so true. You just gotta constantly make sure that, you know, the future is better than the past. Yeah, leaving things better than yep. you found them. I mean, not Love just that. your life, but you know, everything that you touch, you wanna make sure that it's better yeah. than than what it was before. Just keep on keeping on forever cruising. <laughs> so to wrap up again I know so again you know again that song this song is about uh, all those things you've talked about not knowing what's coming next yeah you know sometimes it's hard to find the inspiration it's hard to to be in the state of mind you want to be in to, yeah. to, to feel like you're not where you are where you want to be in your life yeah but just sort of hoping and trusting that'll be something good something better than the day before yep so that being said what's next for Andrew Young Whew. Well, I just feel like I just got a whole load off my shoulders from putting this EP out or this album out. Yeah, debut LP. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like I said, making the music is the fun and easy part, but then when it comes out, when when it comes to making sure it gets heard, that's the hard part. And so I want to, you know, start playing more shows. Um, you know, like things like this is 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 the next things in this whole process like this interview is like another content to put out that that's gonna you know help the album just reach more people exactly yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah i want to play more shows and for a while i've been, i've kind of like not been so serious about the whole artist thing because i was just really into producing but then um i feel like i should you know push my artist career as well you know for me i'm never going to stop pushing you to <laughs> keep writing songs and, and recording projects yeah. and putting them out there and pushing yourself as an artist because <laughs> i think i think you're an ultra talented songwriter you're an amazing performer um and i think you know you're you're a very special talent sir so <laughs> i thank you for creating art and being the artist that you are i'm so glad you put this this your first album out and um, I, I really truly love it. I'm so glad to have that physical copy sitting on my <laughs> on my on my stack of CDs right on the top, right <laughs> next to my computer. And um, I love bumping it in the car. It's a great driving album. Forever cruising <laughs> when I cruise. I, I I love listening to this record. So once again, thank you for your art. Congrats on putting this album out. Thank you. And um, yeah, so I think that just about concludes. Yeah, that's a good place to leave. Um, yeah. Yeah, that just about concludes the album breakdown, the track-by-track track breakdown. Thank you guys for watching. Um, so next we're going to do, we'll just we'll just wrap up with some other, we'll do a whole other segment just with sure. some general questions. Sure. And um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. And um, yeah, check Smash out the next. Smash that subscribe button. <laughs> 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 that's right oh which actually reminds me let's do it on this one too to what? before we before we sign off here okay okay why don't you tell everybody just sort of like where they can one more time where i mean everyone knows where they can listen to music but yeah where on all streaming services but where they can just like find you like social media stuff i feel like i'm most active on instagram okay um so you have two instagram profiles i have two instagram pro profiles one's andrew young k Another one's AY Lifestyles. It's just for my photography whenever I feel like posting up some photos that I've taken. Um, but yeah, Instagram is 
that's like that's everyone's newspaper nowadays right <laughs> at andrew young k andrew young kim at a y lifestyles yeah follow this dude on instagram he's got some great photos um the music is amazing great new uh you know debut album and some amazing eps uh, you know, so the stuff that came up before this too. So youtube.com slash Andrew Young, I think, or Andrew Young K. Cool. I, I don't know. There you go. Either youtube.com slash Andrew Young or Andrew Young K. There you go. Um, yeah. Once again, thank you guys for watching. But wait, wait. Would oh. you want to plug in anything? Did I want to plug anything of mine? Yeah. Um, you know, wh whatever you're up to in life, <laughs> you know? Um, well, I'm. So I'm also a singer songwriter. Um, I've been, man, I've been writing songs for years and just putting stuff together. Andrew started recording a bunch of my stuff and helping produce uh, a bunch of my songs, but we just kind of ended up, I just, I'm so picky with everything and I'm so picky with my mixes and with everything that we just, I just decided that I was going to start learning how to do everything myself. So I'm in the process of, I've bought a bunch of, you know, I just bought all the, all the standard gear to have like a home recording set up and I've just been diving deep into all that stuff and just learning and, and getting some lessons from this dude and teaching myself how to do everything. So I'm in the midst of recording material for three different projects. <laughs> um, maybe even uh you know some different genres all kinds of different stuff so yeah keep you know keep your ears ears and eyes peeled <laughs> um can you keep your ears peeled keep your eyes peeled and ears open i guess but um <laughs> um yeah so that's me i mean i'll be putting stuff out hopefully soon um uh I'm, right now one of the other bands that i'm playing in is with some of my other best friends um a band called bandy b a n d y you can find us at Bandy Music on Instagram, on uh, Apple Music, you can and Spotify. You can find Bandy. Um, yeah, we play a bunch of shows. Got some really fun stuff. We just recorded an EP, um, which will be out later this year. And um, yeah, so you can check check out my stuff. Um, I have a rock band called Ride the Wave. You can find that everywhere you find music. Um, Ride the Wave. Is Ride the Wave on like iTunes and Spotify and Apple Music? I actually do think we have stuff on iTunes. Oh. Yeah. I think there's okay. some some of our EPs are on Apple Music. I need to check. Okay. I think they are actually. Okay. But yeah, you can find Ride the Wave music on Instagram, YouTube. Uh, that's more of rock and roll type stuff. If you need stuff. guitar lessons, hit them up. Hey, there you go. <laughs> he and I, Andrew and I both give guitar lessons at an awesome guitar school um, in Burbank, California called Guitar Ninjas. We give lessons kind of like based off the karate belt, colored belt system where you start at the white pick level and you go through to the black pick. Super fun stuff. We got, you know, ages <laughs> like four through literally like early 70s. Full grown adults. Yeah. I mean, like literally grandparents. So yeah. we have infants and toddlers and infants to, to senior citizens, to grandparents. So yeah, if you're interested in learning how to play the guitar we also now give drum lessons actually and piano yeah. lessons as well um guitar ninjas you can find us everywhere um but we're, we're in burbank and orange and huntington beach um so yeah um i think that's everything it's a good place yeah, yeah. um for the record thank you guys check out thank this man's listening. debut lp first album forever cruising forever cruising available everywhere online pretty much that's right yeah. thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys cool all righty all right Whew. that's a wrap <laughs> all right dude we did it we did it boy good shit <laughs>